Okay, so you've had a chance to look at modelling the basics of our rock, paper, scissors game. So let's take a look at how I've done the things that you've looked at. Okay, um, now what we decided was that we'd use the atoms rock, paper and scissors to represent those three choices. And what I've done here is to represent the result of one set of plays as another collection of atoms, either win, lose or draw. As you can see here, what I've done in result is to describe each of the outcomes um, as a literal set of, of arguments and to give the corresponding result. So the result of playing rock against scissors is a win. And that's a win because it's a win for the, the left hand or the first of the arguments. Um, so usually when we present data, we present it from the, the left-hand side perspective. So there's our result. Now what I've chosen to do here is to represent that as a, a set of atoms. So these are literal values, if you like. The advantage of that is if you call result of rock and rock, you see very clearly that it's either a win or a lose or a draw. The downside is that we can't compute so easily with those things. So I've got a, um, another function defined further down here called outcome. What outcome does is take one of those um, atoms and turns it into a numeric value. And as you can imagine, that's going to be useful when we want to compute the overall um, outcome of a tournament, say, a series of plays, a series of pairs of plays. So I'm saying that the outcome of a win is 1, the outcome of a lose is minus 1, and the outcome of a draw is 0. Now, one of the things you looked at was taking the result of a tournament, and you can see that function defined here. And I challenged you to use uh, built-in functions from the list module. Now, in fact, this is a really nice example because you can do everything with those built-in functions. Because what are we presented with as arguments? We presented two lists of plays. So, and the corresponding values in there are the plays at that particular term. Um, and what do we have to do? Well, we have to look at those corresponding values and find the result. And we can do that using zip width. And you can see, so the inner application here is zip width. And what we do here is apply zip the function result along those two lists, and that will give us a list consisting of win, lose, draw, and so on. But what we then need to do is convert those into numeric values, and we do that by mapping outcome, this thing that turns win, lose, and draw into numeric values. We map that along the list. So then we get a list of zeros, ones, and minus ones. And to get the overall result, we take the sum of that list. So what we've got here is a composition of functions. First, we do zip with along the two lists. Then we map outcome along there, converting those results to numeric values, and then we sum those numeric values. So there we've got the result of our, our tournament. And so what we did here was we used, we've got the, the direct representation of the plays, we've got a direct representation of the outcomes of each round, um, and we have our outcome function turns this, this direct representation into a, um, a number. You're going to see why in a minute, but I've also, the other sort of auxiliary function I've built in are these functions enum and val. Because at the moment we have our functions rock, paper and scissors, our, our values, sorry, rock, paper and scissors. Sometimes we want to convert those to numbers. We want some numeric value for those. So what Val does is turn rock to zero, paper to one, and scissors to two. What enum does is turn those codes back to our um, the three values. So enum of zero is rock, enum of one is paper, enum of two is scissors. And you'll see in a minute why why those are useful. But you might you will probably find them useful in exercises to come as well. And it's an interesting interesting point that it's not always clear what the right representation is. We need to convert between representations to do different kinds of computation. Now, 
The crucial thing I wanted us to think about in this session, and I'm just going to talk through it, um, is the idea of a strategy. What is a strategy in a game like this going to look like? Well, think about, suppose I'm player left. What do I know about what has happened so far by about player right? What I know, and the only thing I know, is the sequence of plays that he or she has made. And I'm representing those as a list. And what I'll do is, just to, to be clear, I'll represent them in a list like this. So if they first play win, uh, first play rock, then play paper, then play scissors, I'll see them as in a list like this. Scissors, paper, rock. So what I do is I add, um, I add the latest play to the head of the list. So I'm building a list like this. Now, what is a strategy? How do we think of a strategy? What can I do with, um, what could a strategy look like? Well, the only thing it could do is take that sequence of plays and compute something on the basis of them. So I'm going to say that a strategy is a function that takes a list of plays and gives me another play. So a strategy is represented as a function. Let me just go across to my file here and show you what that means. Here is a simple strategy. This is a strategy rock, which whatever the other person has played always returns the option rock. It's a pretty silly strategy, but it's a, a strategy nonetheless. Let's just move it down to there. Here's a more interesting strategy, and this is one that people play quite often. It can make a lot of sense. Obviously, the first time I play, I don't know anything about what my opponents have played. So here I'm just taking, I'm just arbitrarily choosing paper. I could make a random choice here as well, but I'm just... When I play this strategy, I always play paper first. But what am I doing here? And this is the key to seeing how these strategies work. Here is, in this argument, is my opponent's list of, strat list of plays, and the last one is the head of the list. What I do is I simply play their last play back to them. That's not a bad choice. Um, so what I'm doing here is I'm echoing their last play. So if they played last round, they played paper. What I play this round is paper. Um, so And the, the function echo is the strategy. Now, I don't want to do all the work. So what we're going to do next is to get you to think about defining some other strategies and to get you to do that most effectively, I'm going to have a little interlude where I'm going to talk about how you define functions as results of other functions. So we'll look at that. But before we do either of those two things, I just want to show you one other thing here. I've defined a way of you playing against a strategy. This is a function play, and you pass into that the strategy as an argument. So let's just show how that works in practice. This is called interactive, and we're playing play. And what I want to play as a, um, a strategy, well, let me, I, can, I could enter that strategy as like this, I could enter it as a function expression. Um, and what I'm going to do here is just have a silly strategy that does, just plays rock every time. Okay. So there's my strategy. I don't need a full stop there. I need a full stop here. And what you see is it says rock, paper, scissors, play, play one of rock, paper, scissors, or RPS, followed by a full stop, because I'm using an Erlang built-in term. So let me play rock. It's a draw. Let me play paper. Oh, I've won. 
Let me play scissors. I've lost. Let me play paper again and again. Oops. Oh, because I failed to put a... I'm, what I'm using here is Erlang's I.O. read operation. You can see that here. And what that expects is to read an Erlang term. So I can play this again. Um, so it's playing the same game. If I just always play paper, paper, I'm always going to win. So once I, I've worked out what my opponent is playing as a strategy, and then to stop it, I, I say stop, followed by full stop. So this is reading an Erlang term off the, um, it's reading an Erlang term off the command, off the terminal, and it's using that. Uh, and you can see what am I doing? If it's a stop, I stop. If it's not a stop, I calculate the result. I print it out, and then I play recursively. I've got a tail recursion here, and I've put the last play. The last play that was made is put on the list here. So you can see I'm building up the list of plays backwards, as it were. Um, so it's this and it's this second argument that carries the, the moves. So I could play something else here. I could, um, let's go back to here. Instead of doing that, I could play a function that's already defined. I could play interactive echo slash one. And let's see what happens. Now, what I'm going to play here is paper. I play paper here. Now, I know, because I know what my opponent's playing now, I know they're going to play paper. So what I'm going to play now is scissors. So I win. And I know next time they're going to play scissors, so I'm going to play rock. And then I know next time they're going to play rock, so I'm going to play paper. So I can win. Once I've guessed what my opponent is playing, I can win every time. So what we're going to think about is how to devise better strategies and there's a whole set of exercises coming up for you to do those, but and, and also to get you to think about writing some different functions that will play one strategy against another, for example. So that's something else I'm going to ask you to do. So that's coming up next, but before that, what we're going to do is a detour into higher order functions in general and also some small exercises on those, just to familiarise yourselves with what you can do. And then we'll come back and um, you'll do the exercises on building strategies. And you may like to, to look at this video again at that point.